Well, as many of you well know, Julie missed several weeks of work, but is now back with us. And so, Julie, today you're going to explain exactly what happened to you, right? That's right. Talking is, of course, something I used to take for granted. You never realize how critical your voice is to your life until you lose it. Here's my story on how I've been fighting to get it back. Glad you're with us this morning. I love my busy job and lifestyle. I am literally always on the run. I forecast the weather, give the report on the morning and new news. <laughs> and oh yeah, hang out with puppies. Not a bad life at all. 65 degrees. I've been doing this job for over a decade with no problems. But in the past few years, you've probably noticed I hit a serious roadblock. Yes, you were sick quite a bit, despite a lot of medical therapy. Ear, nose and throat specialist Dr. Ted Rainey has been working with me to try to control my health and voice problems. But this past February, it became obvious that they were spiraling out of control. For you, I think it was kind of multifactorial. Your allergies were a big component, and so that created a lot of inflammation. And some of that inflammation was in your lungs, and that created aggravations with your asthma. You can't move as much air, so your voice couldn't be nearly as strong because of that but also just the chronic post-nasal drainage draining down and affecting your larynx and creating inflammation. This CAT scan finally explained why I was having so much trouble. Uh, these are maxillary sinuses. This should all be black, but you can see that it's filled in with a lot of swollen tissue and a fluid level. Some of these sinuses are individually plugged up and swollen. Not the best picture on me. <laughs> the blocked sinus and structural problems basically meant I was constantly staying sick and my best option to get better and stay better with sinus surgery. It doesn't mean you'll never get a cold, but hopefully your antibiotic usage will go way down uh, and a uh, lot fewer incidences of being infected. It's been a slow recovery process, but we are hopeful my health and voice is on the men's. And to train my voice to overcome any future struggles, I have also been working with Mission Hospital speech pathologist Patty Hanlon. As you have found, it is a very physically demanding task. If you're having a day where you can't breathe because of your asthma or your sinuses are dripping on top of your vocal folds, it's going to cause a lot of problems where you may lose your voice. Long, easy breath in and go. A biofeedback tool shows my voice quality has improved, but we still have work to do. Here's your pitch and then your loudness level, which as we can see, Julie has made significant improvements. Several months ago, my voice barely registered on the system. You've made huge strides to date, as people have probably seen. However, behind the scenes, you're doing a lot of things with vocal hydration, vocal rest, stretching to make sure your voice continues at conversation level. And a lesson for everyone that I have learned the hard way. The most important thing is resting your voice when you're having trouble. If your voice sounds raspy or your throat clearing or coughing, you need to be silent. You can cause more trouble that way. Yes, it certainly can. It's been a tough journey back to the studio, but I'm a fighter, and I'm well on my way to miking back up for good. And I've also been working with the great folks at Allergy Partners and Asheville Pulmonology. And my doctors wanted to let everyone know that sinus surgery, it's not for everyone. You have to have some serious problems, five to six sinus infections a year. And I wanted to spread a little tip that I really found helpful from my speech pathologist. Okay, you know when you, you can't talk and you sort of clear your throat thinking you're helping? <clears throat> yeah, like that. Okay, that's the last time anyone's gonna do that. But basically wow. that's slamming your vocal cords together. What you can do is do a, a little cough. You can go <sighs> sort of like a breath out and then take a drink of water to clear everything back out and that will help instead of having to clear your throat and i was doing that a lot so that could be a hard habit to break i Seriously. would think it I took mean, me all of us it took that. me weeks and i'm not saying i, I never do it but it, it certainly helps there's a lot of little tips that hmm. you can do to get yourself back okay some good advice we'll certainly again Glad you're back. Yeah, it's been a struggle, but it is wonderful to I'm be back. I'm glad to see the actual data that says that you are doing better and the right. strides that you've made. It was cool to see that. Do you like the picture of my face? Yes.